The water is bubbling under the fishing boat as if something is coming up out of the water. It gets closer and closer. The water seems to boil. Suddenly, you see giant jaws and glistening teeth. Seconds later, a huge shark jumps out of the water and crushes the boat in one bite. It was the megalodon, the largest fish that ever existed on Earth. Now, we pictured the megalodon as this, an enlarged version of the white shark for a long time. But scientists continue to argue about its appearance. So far, they agree that the image of this giant shark was wrong. Here's the data that scientists are sure of. Size, about 50 feet long. That's as big as a school bus and comparable to the length of a subway car. 8.5 times the height of an average person. Let's compare it to the modern white shark. The megalodon is three times bigger, but that's just a rough estimate. We don't have a fully preserved skeleton of the megalodon. That's because it didn't have any bones but cartilage. Not much of that left in the 3.6 million years since the megalodons went extinct. All that survived were teeth and a few vertebrae. By comparison, dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago. But their solid bones are perfectly preserved and we have many different examples of their skeletons. Scientists have calculated the size of a megalodon based on its teeth and jaw. Now, this is one tooth. It's about 7 inches long, bigger than the palm of your hand, and three times the size of a modern white shark's teeth. The megalodon jaw was 6 feet wide and chalked up 5 rows of teeth, a total of 276 razor-sharp chompers. The other preserved remains are the vertebral column, It consists of 150 vertebrae, each 6 inches wide. They contain much calcium because, well, megalodon love fresh cold milk. (laughs) Nah, it's because the vertebrae had to withstand the enormous mass of a giant shark. Based on those fossils, scientists created a model and calculated only the approximate size of the megalodon. But it could hardly have been any bigger. It's all about breathing. The bigger the fish, the more oxygen it needs which means a larger gill area. That's the organ that filters the water and collects oxygen. If the megalodon were any larger, it would have trouble breathing. So, scientists believe that 50 feet is the maximum size of an individual. On average, they were a few feet smaller. Now, let's talk weight. On average, one megalodon weighed about 30 to 35 tons. By comparison, a white shark weighs one ton, which is 30 times less. Hey, trust me. A school bus is four times lighter at seven and a half tons. The weight of a megalodon can be compared to an empty Boeing 737. But the modern blue whale beats the megalodon in size and weight. 98 feet long versus 50, almost twice as long. Blue whale's weight is about 180 tons. That's like six megalodons or six passenger planes, or like 33 adult elephants. Hey, don't you love the comparisons? Now, about the appearance of the megalodon. Scientists believe it didn't look like a white shark. The megalodon belongs to a different fish family and most likely looked like a giant sand tiger shark. Flattened snout, small eyes. Its dorsal fin is moved backwards. The sand shark has two dorsal fins about the same size. The coloration is light brown with a white belly and may have had brown-red spots like a sand shark all over its body. We used to think of the megalodon as something scary from the first finds of its fossils. That was back in the Renaissance era. People found some teeth in the rocks. At first, these teeth were thought to be the tongues of dragons or snakes. And here's the first drawing of what the owner of these teeth supposedly looked like. A massive snout with a scary nose and a bunch of razor-sharp teeth. We also have the evidence that megalodons were brutal hunters, kings of the food chain. The first combat tool in their arsenal was the battering ram. The megalodon was a slow swimmer, though. It could only accelerate up to 11 miles per hour. In comparison, the modern white shark can reach 35 miles per hour in a dash for its meal. The fastest human swimmer could only go 6 miles per hour. Well, good luck with that. But the megalodon had incredible mass. Though slow, its battering ram had tremendous power. The megalodon would take its prey by surprise. It had only one chance to hit it. If it missed, it would take too long for a second round. The maneuverability of the megalodon was comparable to a large truck. But if the ram was successful, the prey was stunned and couldn't move. At this point, the megalodon aimed at vulnerable spots, like the fins and tail of the prey. 
Scientists have found many ancient whale remains with megalodon tooth marks. It turned out that the giant shark knew where its prey's vital organs were located and could strike at them. When the prey was immobilized, the megalodon bared its teeth. An adult person could easily fit into its open jaw at full height. And according to various estimates, the bite force of the megalodon was almost 11 tons. Now imagine the weight of three SUVs concentrated at the tip of a sharp tooth. That's nine times the power of the largest white shark bite, and six times the power of the modern record holder for biting, the saltwater crocodile. Here, look at a map of where the remains of the megalodon were found. South and North America, Europe, Asia, Australia. It was the master of all seas and was comfortable anywhere on our planet. We've even found some remains of the giant shark in freshwater sediments. Perhaps it wasn't afraid to enter rivers to hunt. Now, other scientists say that maybe the megalodon wasn't even a predator. All because of its size. It couldn't swim fast. It couldn't even make short dashes like the white shark. If prey tried to escape, the megalodon didn't rush into pursuit because it could never catch up with it. Another problem is the skeleton of the megalodon. The cartilage is weaker than the bones, so the musculature of the giant shark was not as massive and robust in the first place. The megalodon may even have been a scavenger and never got into fights. This is one of the reasons why ancient sharks became extinct. Megalodons like shallow warm waters, with temperatures ranging from 53 degrees Fahrenheit. But over 3 million years ago, the climate turned colder. This deprived the megalodons of territories and plenty of food. The primitive whales that had been the main diet of the giant sharks began to disappear. Faster predators took the remnants of food. The megalodon started to starve. In evolution, a new player entered the field, the toothed whales, ancestors of the modern killer whales. They lived in packs and had bigger brains than the megalodon. So, over time, they started to compete with the megalodon. They took advantage of its clumsiness. A group of killer whales could easily win a competition against a giant shark. Many scientists believe this was the reason for the disappearance of the largest shark in the world. But there are theories that the megalodon is still alive and roaming the dark waters of our planet. Several Australian fishers have allegedly encountered a shark of incredible size. But no one can confirm these testimonies. Fans of this theory believe that giant sharks can hide in deep waters away from human eyes. In the Mariana Trench, for example, it's the deepest place on our planet. It's deeper than if you stuck Mount Everest in the water. And we've even found the teeth of a megalodon there. But science says that such a giant shark couldn't live in the Mariana Trench for many reasons. One, it's too cold. The megalodon was probably a cold-blooded fish, so it had to use the warmth of its environment to survive. But the water in the Mariana Trench is cold, about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. That's because the deeper down, the less sunlight gets in there. The second reason is pressure. Every 30 feet deep increases the pressure by one atmosphere. That is, at the depth of 100 feet, the water presses you three times harder than you would feel it at the surface. The weak muscles and cartilage of the megalodon wouldn't allow it to dive too deep into the Mariana Trench. And most importantly, food. The farther from the ocean surface, the fewer living organisms. Megalodons used to eat primitive whales, ranging from 10 to 20 feet. Small fish only inhabit the Mariana Trench. A megalodon would never be able to catch one. And judging by its size, all the megalodon did was eat and then look for food again compare its weight to that of a human. The average human should get about 2,000 calories a day with an average weight of about 180 pounds. The megalodon weighed 470 times that and needed many more calories. So even all the fish inhabiting the Mariana Trench could hardly feed a megalodon for even a few days. So all these theories, of course, are not true. But still, it's just smart to be careful out there. <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs>